being projected 10th in the pack is insane to be where you guys are now. Like at the beginning of the season, I saw that I was like, are we sure? Yeah, and what's crazy too is like, you would think like that we would be like, like feel like disrespected yeah. or be like, mad that we were paying like truly for me like i saw that and i was like <laughs> they have no idea yeah you're like, like bet presented by wendy's welcome back to sometimes i hoop today we've got one of pac 12's finest joining us on the pod Quick humble brag, 2024 All Pac-12 member, 1,000 point club, menace from the three point line, fearlessly leading Oregon State into the Sweet 16. None other than superstar Talia Vonnelhofen. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Oh, stop. I'm excited to have you here. I feel like it's been a while since we've gotten to chat. Really, really since like your official visit, which was way too long ago. But anyways. Heading into the Sweet 16, what song is on repeat for you right now? I don't even know. Anything off Drake's album. I've been listening to Drake heavy okay. recently. Got back into that. Um, Second like Man, Bridal Path is a song that I just rediscovered. So I've been listening to that one. Ooh, okay. That's good. I feel like that that's a classic vibe heading into tournament. It really all the yep. time. But <laughs> jumping into women's hoops landscape right now, you guys had a great win over Nebraska in the second round. When mm -hmm. they're a tough team to beat, they beat Iowa earlier in the year. You mm -hmm. led the team with 19 points, eight rebounds, five threes, and your team had 10 collective blocks. Tell me about the game. What moment were you like, we're going to win? We're going to the Sweet 16. What were the vibes like? Because I know Gilby getting real loud up in there. Real loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I mean, obviously, you got a whole game to go, but that first quarter, just the way that we came out and the way that um, we were defending, like you said, a lot of blocks, we were kind of disrupting all their actions, and then we were hitting shots in that first quarter, and everything just felt good. Like you said, the crowd was loud. Um, so in that moment, I was kind of like, yeah, there's no way we lose this game. Obviously, three quarters to go, but... I mean, it felt good from the start. And then, yeah, I think our defense is what did it. I think held them to 51, mm -hmm. I want to say. And they're, they're a really good offensive team. Um, they shoot the ball really well. So we did a great job running them off the three-point line and then held their their center um, to, you know, good numbers for us. So, um, yeah, it was just a great defensive effort. And, um, you know, the crowd kind of carried us through. It was, yeah. it was insane. No, it looks really cool. And I think what you talked about, getting a jump on them, getting a jump on a team like that mm -hmm. is really important because they have so many different weapons offensively. And I feel mm -hmm. like the brackets being so tough this year, the competition is so stiff. Like we in the first round, we saw Middle Tennessee over Louisville. Second round, mm -hmm. Col Colorado over K-State. We know Colorado's tough. Baylor over Virginia Tech. Talk to me about just the atmosphere of the tournament this year, all the different upsets, all the high competition that's going on. Yeah, it's insane. I think um, the parity in women's basketball every year is just like increasing and you truly never know, um, you know, what way games are going to go. And like you said, everything's so well scouted um, and basketball is kind of a game of, you know, what are you going to give up? And so just knowing what looks you're going to get um, and, and having those reads going into it. And then it kind of comes down to, you know, who's going to make better decisions and um knock shots down so it's super exciting kind of to watch as a fan like obviously I'm in the tournament yeah. but like, um I'm really excited for like our games this weekend but I'm also like just excited to watch other teams yeah. and you know growing up um you know watching every game and so I kind of still feel like a fan in a way like I'm excited to watch all these other hoopers um yeah. obviously locked into our game and all that but um just as a fan of women's basketball and just seeing the game grow it's super exciting no, it's so cool. I feel like every game has been kind of close. There hasn't really been a huge blowout yet. And so mm. I feel like it's so cool. Like you talked about the parity, like the competition of women's basketball, the level of play, the skill sets have gotten so much better year after year, which is mm. so exciting for the game. And I guess I'm a fan of the tournament now. Like it's weird to think that I'm this far <laughs> removed from it. So I'm just strictly a fan nowadays. But it's so exciting to like see all of you guys really showing out on the biggest stages. And you have a big game coming up. You're playing Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And last time y'all played, you had, you dropped 25. It was a close loss, but you dropped 25. So how are we feeling heading into the game? I feel like they have a lot of heavy hitters, but so do you guys with you, Reagan, Donovan, the list just go on. So what are the vibes going in? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I think last time we played, I was definitely in more of like a 
scoring role. Like I had to, um, I was more high volume. Um, that was kind of just my role on that team. So now I feel like I'm more like a playmaker and then kind of just feeling out, you know, if I need to, you know, score a lot or if I just need to lock down on D and get the ball to Ray, you know, kind of just feeling <laughs> that out um, through all the games. But no, we're feeling really good. I think we match up well and um, our team is super deep this year. So we just have so many different looks that we can throw at people. Um, and that's just always exciting because you never know who on our team is going to have a big night. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know. I'm just excited to see um, how it goes and just to be on the stage. I mean, we've been on the Pac-12 network all year. So yeah. to find it from ESPN games, like that's exciting. Yeah. I feel like a lot, of, a lot of people don't know about our team. Um, and so kind of like the underdogs in that way, especially with like um, – getting that media and that attention. Not that that's what you play for, but, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people have seen our team play. So I'm just yeah. excited for um, especially our, our young guys to be on that stage and um, just have this opportunity. We're, we're really excited and we're ready. No, for sure. I think on the pod specifically, like you guys have come up as a team all the time about being like, okay, Oregon State's kind of a dark horse. Like they're coming to the tournament. I feel like you talked about, on years past, you've definitely been more of a high volume shooter. Like you were, you had to score 25 night in and night out for you guys to compete. And this year, like we know you can all get to that, but it's like, that's, you're playing so much more facilitator. Talk more about the tournament. Also in your side of the bracket, we have South Carolina and Indiana, which is another big game coming up, which I'm interested mm -hmm. about. I'm really excited for the other Portland region with NC State and Stanford. I feel like, obviously like I want Stanford to win, but I'm really interested to watch that matchup because I feel like that's just, there's a lot of different heavy hitters on both sides. But mm -hmm. is there a matchup that you see coming up, whether it be USC Baylor, UConn Duke, I'm interested, Iowa, Colorado, LSU, UCLA, like there's so many good games. What games are you really looking forward to? Maybe even calling an upset as we head into this weekend. Yeah, I think those last two, LSU, UCLA, and then Iowa, Colorado. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for because I went to the game in Seattle last year mm -hmm. where I played Colorado, you know, on my crutches. I was in Honda <laughs> Arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was able to watch that game. Um, and Colorado's roster is obviously super similar to last year. So I'm excited for that matchup. Um, I think I got Colorado on this one. I want the upset. Yeah. But um, yeah, the, and then that LSU UCLA game too. I honestly, I'm rooting for the whole Pac 12. Like, yeah. I think it'd be super cool to see, especially in our last year, um, just to see Seriously. the West Coast um, come through. Like, I'm I'm excited for all the Pac-12 teams. I agree. Back to Pac, always. Back to pack, <laughs> always always <laughs> rocking with the Pac. But I think – I didn't even realize that this was a rematch between Iowa and Colorado. You're so right because uh -huh. last year that was really close. But I called Colorado early in the year with LSU, and I feel like I'm going to back them again because you can literally never count them out. And playing against them, it's really annoying. But like now being away from it, I love watching them play and seeing yeah. Jalen and Tamia and Quay and everybody. They are just dogs, like night in and night out. And I really enjoy watching Aaronette this year. I feel like she has grown so much. But thinking about the tournament, I want to fuel the madness a little bit. And these next questions are brought to you by our lovely sponsor, Wendy's. So which teams in the tournament so far have made you do a double take? A team that's maybe gone further than you thought or like put up a stronger fight in earlier rounds? Probably Colorado. I think um, going to play at K-State, I think they, I want to say they sold it out. Um, yeah. It's not an easy place to play. So going into that environment a sold out crowd and then not only to get the upset but i think they won by like 10 yeah um, so convincingly like that's so hard to do i mean i got to play in gill and i can't even imagine like coming into gill to play a tournament game as a yeah. host team like that's so tough so like you know if you win by 10 in that environment you know that that's kind of a a blowout like it is. anywhere else you know what i mean like yeah. it's kind of like it doesn't do it justice. So that was super impressive to me. And I wasn't able to watch that game, but I remember just being like, Colorado won, like, my goodness. So that was that one was shocking to me. No, sure. I agree. I think what you said, like, taking into account the atmosphere, it definitely is more of a blowout than 10. Like, it's yeah. a lot more going into that. Because going against an opposing crowd is already so much. And a place like K-State, where they're having an amazing year, all these record-breaking mm -hmm. things, that's tough. 
Um, so we talked about team, but what players are impressing you this tournament that maybe you hadn't expected or kind of like an unsung hero that really came to light right now? Well, I'm, not, I'm talking about Colorado. We're just we're just like, loving on Colorado right now. <laughs> no, we are. But you said it earlier, um, Aaronette, Nettie yeah. has such a great year, and I think she had seven steals against Kansas State. I Which is say. like, what? That's not it's the usual. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, she's an Oregon kid and um, very close with Bendu, who's one of my former teammates. And yeah. so just to see – her growth, I mean, she's so good and so smooth. Um, and then, yeah, obviously had a huge performance these first two rounds. So uh, both ends of the floor. I mean, she's she's really yeah. impressed me all year. Um, and then obviously had a great game against K-State. But, yeah, yeah lots of Colorado love today. <laughs> Just loving on the buffs right now. But, not, you know, on one hand, like, we love the buffs, but also not too much because the not buffs be much. getting under my skin. They really yeah, yeah, do. We'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. <laughs> But we talked about the Pac-12 and the immense amount of talent that we have. Which player in the Pac do you feel like is the toughest player to guard? That's tough. I There's feel a like, lot. I mean, this – well, I don't know if this is my answer, but guarding Hannah Jump is just the, <laughs> the worst thing. I mean, yeah. I'm coming off eight screens of possession. <laughs> I'm just chasing this girl around. So I think from, yeah. like, a, from an always moving – standpoint of just like all the actions that you do to get her open and obviously like already knowing you have to chase her off everything it's like flare pin down and then she goes to that and she's just like yeah on a marathon I mean she's literally like a track star and that's she just is. so impressive of like her ability to shoot because it's like that shot comes after she had just been running for 25 seconds straight. no you're completely right um, so I think from that perspective I would say her and then um charisma too i think just her her bag so deep that it's like okay whatever our tendencies are you want her to go this way and take this shot and then she hits it and you're like okay I mean, what's, what about now <laughs> yeah so what next okay yeah, like yeah, i did my job yeah she's just one of those players she doesn't have a super strong tendency she can kind of just get to any shot and she's a gamer and um you know wants big moments and just super athletic and can kind of do it all so i would say those two Sure. Yeah, those two are two good picks. I think, mm -hmm. especially the Hannah Jump one being her teammate, I was just thinking about like how within the offense there's so many actions for her. I've never thought of it defensively having to guard that. Like that would be exhausting <laughs> because being her teammate, I'm just like, come on, Hannah, like run faster. I know you're not tired. Like do this. Think about defensively, like y'all really be chasing her around and she gets that shot off in less than a second so like mm -hmm. if you're late it's happening and charisma is just a bucket like all around she's very annoying to guard so i agree with that one as well talking about kind of the orchid state trajectory did you feel like there was a point in the season, in the summer, whatever, where you were like, okay, like we can make a Sweet 16 Elite Eight Final Four run. Like we can really be a contender in the Pac-12. When do you feel like it all kind of came together for you to see the trajectory of what you guys are doing now? Yeah, I think for me when I had that moment was probably when we went to Italy. Mm -hmm. um, and I still... Dang, I that's like, early. That's early. <laughs> no, I, it was. But I yeah. think that's kind of like one of my I don't know if I, I'd call it a fault but like I've seen that in every team like that's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know I've always had that belief in every team I'm on just like as a competitor but um I think Italy because I wasn't back yet so I still couldn't play um from my surgery and so I was just like on the sidelines but just watching the way that you know you have those 10 practices leading up to it which also I think has a, contributed to our success this year like those 10 practices of like that's 30 hours where you know we had that extra time to like learn each other and like then going overseas and getting that experience of just like getting to know each other better like I yeah. truly think that has played a huge role in our success this season just like that bonus time but just the way that we played over there and like how fun it was and we really emphasized like playing fast and like getting up and pressuring which isn't really what we do but mm -hmm. we kind of like emphasize that and it was just super fun and so seeing that like from the bench like how good we can be and I'm not even like a part of it I'm just like dang like 
we have and the freshmen coming in, just their ability to defend and run. And we have a super athletic freshman group that kind of just like changed the dynamic of the team. That was that was truly when I was like, oh, like we could really do this. And then yeah. it's exciting because, you know, we're, we're picked to finish 10th. Like no one has us on any sort of radar. And um, for me, that was exciting. I was just like, y'all don't even know what we have, what we have coming. <laughs> for you. Um, yeah. So I, I would say that trip was really when I was like, I I mean, truly, I did believe that. Like I had no reason to probably, but I was like, yeah, we could go far. Yeah. Well, I love that it came so early. You, you just knew. And that's amazing confidence. And I think <laughs> it, w- it must have been so interesting for you to like just watch that from a sideline perspective, like for you getting to learn the games, doing everything since you weren't able to play yet. And I think what you talked about, like the chemistry that you build in the off season means everything throughout the year in terms of encore chemistry, just getting along in the locker room, doing all these different things. It really pays dividends in the long run. What do you feel like were the biggest things that you had to focus on, biggest growth in your game that you saw moving into this season? I think definitely defense has been like my biggest point of growth and just point of emphasis. I think to have, to be a great team, to be a Final Four team and, you know, to accomplish what we want to accomplish, like we have to have a top 10 defense. Like that's always a goal. I mean, um, if you look at all the Final Four teams in years past and like we've pulled this up and looked at the stats, like it's all top 10 defenses. Like it's not a secret that that's what it takes to get to the Final Four. And so I think just having conversations about that and then really understanding that and knowing like that I play a big role in if we're going to have a top 10 defense and then just taking that so seriously. And, you know, this year, um, like starting Patton, maybe not the first few weeks, but there was definitely a turning point in Pac-12 where I went and I was like, I want this matchup. I want this matchup. And so taking on that role, um, I think has been just the, the biggest growth in my game. And then also mm-hmm. learning to embrace it and enjoy it and just know that, you know, that's what it takes. Um, And then kind of in being in a leadership role and having that mindset, it kind of spreads throughout the team to where like defense is our identity. And even you saw in Nebraska, I think we went like eight minutes without scoring a field goal, Mm -hmm. which obviously not okay. Like that's (laughs) not that that's good, but like our, our defense like allowed us to weather that and still like maintain like a comfortable lead um throughout like a drought like that and you know that's kind of, that's what it takes in March is to have that sort of a defense so I think that's definitely like been a night and day difference for me this year yeah well I think that like you talked about all of those different analytics that you look at of final four teams like you see mm-hmm. the defense you see the rebounding assist to turnover ratios like all those different things I remember like you pull up those stats and you look at that throughout the season to see where you're yeah. ranking and so I think for you You know, hearing Scott talk about how you're another coach out there with your basketball IQ, with your leadership, your ability to execute, with you being the head of the snake and then you buying into defense, everything just falls after you. And I Mm -hmm. think that's so important. And for you to understand that you have that type of power is is really important for you to understand. Mm -hmm. But stepping into this leadership role, even still so young, which is crazy to think about, like you still have more time there, but stepping into this leadership role that you have, what you know, when did you kind of step into that role or how did you adjust to now being the older one on the team, even though you're not even very old in the grand scheme of things? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's been, it's kind of been interesting like the last few years because I've been in a weird way, like in a leadership role since my freshman year, just because, you know, we had the turnover after that first year and then um, we didn't have a ton of returners. And then especially going into my sophomore year, like my sophomore year at Oregon State, I had played the most games and the most minutes in an Oregon State uniform on that team. Oh, wow. Okay. As a sophomore. And so like that, not that I felt pressure, but like in a way that puts me in a really big leadership role, um, which is a lot for a sophomore, like sophomore year stuff. Um, And then, you know, with people leaving, not having that – you know, like senior to really guide, like kind of like how Aaliyah did my first year, like yeah. kind of losing that. Um, it put me in a leadership role that I don't think I was necessarily ready for. I don't think anyone could be ready for a role like that as a yeah. sophomore. Um, and so I think going through that my first couple years and just, 
you know, doing things wrong or seeing what I could have done better has what is what has prepared me for this year. Just because like I've been in situations um, where maybe I didn't do the right thing or I didn't say the right thing or, um, you know, whatever it is. I think like those experiences have really prepared me for this year so that even though I am a junior and I still do have one more year left, like I've kind of been through, you know, a lot to prepare me for it. So I think it's just been a unique um, situation with having to be in a leadership role so early. Um, I think has prepared me for this year. And then obviously having AJ with me and, um, you know, transfers that have been in leadership roles at, at other schools. And I think that's what's really cool about our group too is that it kind of comes from everywhere. And mm -hmm. we have that standard of like holding each other accountable that we haven't had in years past um, where it's like it's coming from everyone. Like it can't just be me holding everyone accountable. Like I, we have conversations where I'm like, y'all need to be getting on me too. Like this just needs to be, you know, the culture. And I think we've done a really great job of that this year. And that's what's um, allowed us to be as good as we are, especially defensively. Yeah. No, I think that's so interesting. I never put together that as a sophomore, like you are really that guy for Oregon State for <laughs> like since – you were young, even coming in mm -hmm. as a high school senior, like you were already a go-to in the offense. And so mm -hmm. to be able to have that leadership role so young is, it's hard. It's like, you're already going through so much, trying to figure things out and you're yeah. like leading people older than you. It's almost an awkward situation to be in sometimes, but mm -hmm. I think that you did it with grace and it's seamless. And what you're doing now is special the way that you're leading this team into the tournament. Um, but a little bit about your style of play, you do everything out there, as we've talked about, playmaker, facilitator, all the things. But what's always been a staple is the sharpshooter three. And like, not even just like on three point line, steps back. Like we're guarding you five, five paces behind the three point line. And so, you know, have you always kind of had that be a part of your game? Has it always been a thing? And just also just from playing against you, like you're a competitor. Like you're out there, you're fiery, you're putting in the work and like seeing your defense this year, like you're being a dog out there. You're being the Jalen Sherrod of Oregon State right now. Like you're out there getting in people's grills, loving the defense, getting hyped up off of it. And so just talk to me about your style of play. Yeah, I think um, the deep threes have always been like my favorite thing. Like growing up, that was always, I mean, I, like high school, I was pulling up from like the volleyball line, like just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, <that's been. laughs> kind of my thing um I think this year my like I said my role is different so I haven't shot as many threes and like I said like going through that kind of struggle of I wasn't looking for it necessarily as much I kind of lost that edge as like a shooter because I am trying to you know facilitate be a passer be more in that role um and I think like the Nebraska game kind of that like kind of came out of me again where I was just like yeah no I'm just letting this go like I I had like a moment to myself before the game where I was just like I've worked for this my whole life. Like I've gotten the shots up. Like I need to just come out and shoot if I'm open. Like that's just, that's what it's gonna take. Um, and so I kind of had that realization, but yeah, I don't know. I think passing has always been my favorite thing to do. Like I love doing the no looks and like the behind the backs. So that's kind of been like who I am like my whole life, like growing mm -hmm. up and obviously like and be too flashy in college. Like we gotta, we gotta take care of the ball. <laughs> Rain it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah not too much. <laughs> But um, that's always been my favorite thing for sure. And then, you know, adding defense into it. Um, not that I was ever a terrible defender, but I think now this year just like taking it personally, um, yeah. matchups and different assignments and then just the the level of accuracy you have to play with to really like shut a great player down and like mm -hmm. the angles and, um, you know, watching film and, and learning from the coaches. Um you know, you need to close out at this angle. You can't let her do this. Like all those yeah. little details is kind of like the separator, especially this time of year. So I've like really had fun with that and really like embraced it and I'm really starting to enjoy like those matchups and those challenges. Um, so I think that's just like another aspect that I've added to the game for sure. Yeah, no, I think it, and you can see it. Like it, it makes, it makes a difference. And I think that mm -hmm. it's just going to grow. Like now that you are, I don't know. I feel like defense, I'm still learning to love it, honestly. And so I feel like, you know, once I, once you learn to love it and you love it, like yeah. everything is just going to open up and like you take it personally and all these different things start to happen.
You definitely have a big three going with Reagan averaging a double double, 17 and 10, and Tamia averaging 11 and 7, which is like wild for them to be doing at that young of an age. And even last year, like they came in and I remember like scouting them. And it's like, okay, they're freshmen, they're good. And then you play against them and be like, wow, they're, they're really good. Like they already have it together. Mm -hmm. And so you guys are all dominating on both ends with an amazing supporting cast as well. Everybody buying into their role. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about Reagan and Tamia and what they're doing for you to guys have that kind of power duo on the low blocks. And Tamia obviously stepping out and hitting threes for no apparent reason, which is very <laughs> annoying as an opponent. So what is it like having those two that you can always depend on night in and night out? It's incredible. I think um, Ray is kind of like the foundation of, you know, having a post that can score one on one and can defend one on one is um, necessary to win, especially in March, like uh, to beat great teams. Um, you have to be able to win that matchup. And so having her size and just like balance her ability, her hands, like she yeah. catches everything. Everything. Um, that's just incredible. And then for both of them, just how much they've grown on the defensive end this year um, has been insane. And then having Tamia, who, you know, plays the four, but now can can step off and play the five. And we saw against Nebraska, I mean, we went small for that fourth quarter and she did amazing against their five and like had a few blocks um, because that's a nightmare for a team to guard. I mean, she's picking and popping like at the five. Yeah. Especially in the Pac-12, like, you don't see that a lot with five. So her being able to step out and do that when, you know, Ray's in foul trouble or needs a break or whatever it is, um, just having that threat at the four where it's like she can guard any big, but, um, you know, she can stretch and shoot the three. And then if you try to put someone smaller on her, like, she can go post up. So just, like, that, that versatility, having that in the offense is – just, I mean, a nightmare for the yeah. other team. Um, and it's just so fun to play with, too. Um, so those two definitely have been, you know, critical for our offense. But then just how much they've grown on defense. Like, I can't even say enough about it. Like, they're, <laughs> they're not – they've always been good defenders, but now, like, they're great defenders. And um, having that presence down there is, is everything, especially at this time of year yeah. you need it. So – um, yeah, they're incredible and they're sophomores. Yeah, so. seriously. I think what you said about defense, like it makes all the difference to have those rim protectors, especially mm -hmm. moving through the rest of the tournament. And in yeah. the pack with all the different bigs you have, Cam, Kiki, Lauren, mm -hmm. Aaron, and all these different people. And so I think moving through the rest of the tournament, that's just going to do dividends for y'all. But yeah. talking about the team staying locked in, do you guys have a team motto or a mantra moving through this tournament? I don't know if we have like a – specific thing I kind of talked about this in the press conference the other day like we do really emphasize to each other like just staying present and taking it all in like obviously yeah. we're here to win and we're gonna win but you know even if we don't like this is um a big deal what we're doing and what we've accomplished up to this point so just staying present being grateful for everything and not getting too caught up in um you know all the things that you can all get the things in. all the things <laughs> yes um, for sure it's something that we talk a lot about with each other and so I think that just helps you clear your mind and just stay present is just having that that gratitude um just yeah. to be here and um you know we talk so much like to start the season of like what our goals are what we want to do and like you know making the tournament obviously we want a final four run, run but just to be in the Sweet 16 with the group that we have and coming off last year and all the adversity we face, like it's special that we're here. So obviously not done yet, but, you know, just kind of sitting in that um, gratitude of like just being able to be here, especially from like growing up watching this tournament. And it's yeah. like you know, now we are those players that little girls are growing up watching. And so I think if you have that perspective, like it makes it so easy to just stay locked in, stay present and just enjoy these moments with with each other. Yeah, I love that. And I always think it's so weird to like, when you do take a step back and realize that you're the ones people are watching now, it's like, I'm still figuring things out. Like I, <laughs> I'm, I still don't know what's going on right now, but to understand that there are little girls out there watching you, they want to be you. Like you guys are now those role models is so exciting. And I think playing with that mindset is easy to kind of make things light, not take it too seriously because you want to perform at the highest level, but you don't want to like overdo your nerves for the game or overdo the excitement. So it's it's always striking that balance. But yeah, um, 
like you talked about, like make the Sweet 16, you guys have a bright future. No seniors on the team, returning mm -hmm. literally everybody next season, which is going to be huge. And yeah. like being projected 10th in the pack is insane to be where you guys are now. Like at the beginning of the season, I saw that. I was like, are we sure? Like I, I personally would never count Scott out of anything. Just And then <laughs> thinking about like the talent that you guys have too, I think it's amazing to see how you guys have really like Taking on this underdog story and doing what you're doing and seeing your growth, I think is really special as well. Not only as a player, but as a leader. Headed into our last section here. It's rapid fire answers. It's our vibe check. Here we go. Ready? Okay. okay. What's the drill you never want to see on the practice plan? Oh, <laughs> Alina just walked in. <laughs> oh no, tell her. You gotta tell us in front of her. Hey, what's the drill? What's the drill? <laughs> yeah, well, we okay weaves, but that's how we start practice every day. So. Oh yeah, no weaves are literally horrible. Like I, yeah. I, I, I be want to walk out of the gym during weaves. Yeah, or like free throw running, we do that too. Ew. Okay. Um, nope. Game winning shot or game winning steal? Oh, uh, game winning shot. Yeah, and one <laughs> or three pointer. And one. Okay, group TikTok or solo TikTok. Group TikTok. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who's the biggest trash talker? It could be on your team or somebody that you played against. Um, I feel like there's not a lot going on in the pack. I got this question. I got this question the other day, and I think I said Cam. But I was going to say, I just let the pack. There's a lot of trash talk that be going down up in there. Yeah, I don't know. Probably Cam or Sherrod, but they haven't yeah. even really said a lot to me. It's just like okay. their vibe just gets yeah, yeah, yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see that. All right. Who's the biggest flopper? I don't know if I can answer these questions. <laughs> you can. If you want to cop out, you can say one of your teammates. Wait, can I? I don't know if I should answer this question. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay, fine. Um, biggest basketball ick? <laughs> biggest ba flopping? No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm about to say, now you want to say flopping. Now you want to say it. Um, biggest basketball ick? Honestly, that's a big one. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, flopping. All right, so if you could pick a teammate to play two-on-two -two with, but you can't pick one of your current teammates, who would you pick? <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to say Aaliyah because she's in the room. You can give us somebody else. I need a big, though. I need a big. Uh, probably Marie Gulich. Oh, wow. Okay, an Oregon State alum. Love it. What's mm -hmm. your favorite pregame hype song? Probably this song forever that has like Drake, Eminem. Yeah. Kanye, okay. Well, Talia, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for hopping on today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. And thank you everybody for listening. Stay tuned for another episode of Sometimes I Hoop as the tournament unfolds.